guys, Nathan again and Jason. We're here to do part two of our powerlifting and Olympic lifting section. Today we're going to be dealing with the powerlifts. So for all those that don't know, they're the big three. So we talk about the bench press, the back squat, and also the deadlift. And we're also going to be looking at the front squat, one of Jason's favourites today as well. So let's start with the bench press. Jason's going to be our model today. Jason, what should people know about this while you're setting up? Um, well, a few little things that I like to focus on is definitely positioning of the bar, where we have it along our torso, um, position of our elbows, because we don't want to put a lot of stress on our shoulders. I mean, we are moving a lot of weight, but essentially we can be really strong and safe at the same time without having to sacrifice either. So um, I'm going to get on the bench, Nathan's going to cue me through it, my foot positioning, my back, my arm, and uh, we're going to go from there. All right. So again, so we're going to set up so that the bar's just a bit in front. We tend to come from a slightly back position, which is why we often like to have someone lifting the bar up for us when we go heavy. Jason, I think, is going to be more than fine with this. So, half position really is what's about comfortable for you. So, Jason's going about shoulder width apart. And the thing we really want to notice here, there are two ways with the grip. Jason's going more sort of thumb behind. You can also go thumb around as well. Whatever's comfortable for you. So, Jason, you want to take us through motion? So, I'm going to get a lift off. Notice I have full extension here. It's going to come down to my nipples and my elbows. Notice they are flaring out to the sides, but they're almost kind of winging down a little to a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to press straight through the bar. You can almost think about bending the bar. You're going to push it up so it's going to bend. And then nice, lower, and back up. Exactly. So things you will have noticed with Jason, it's going to bring you down around this nipple line. You can probably re wrap it mate. Let's not pull to your hole all day. His feet are nice and pushed into the ground. You will often see a lot of people arching through that low back. You will get more muscular drive through the pecs with that, but unless you're going for some kind of one rep max or real heavy weights, unless you're very experienced with it, I really don't think you need to be pushing for that just yet. And you're watching slowly, controlling, sorry, control movement down onto the chest and a nice explosive push up. Really, really easy. One more rep for us, so here we go again. Watch those elbows coming down and explosive up. None of this out wide. Jason, you want to show us a bad rep for a second, that big wide grip. See? So that wide there, you're just loading into that shoulder joint and those anterior delts. Which is great if you like to get injured and have overcompensated anterior delts. And no one wants that. Jason, jump up. We're going to rip out this bench here. Right. So we can start with the back squat. The bench, I think. Everyone sort of realises it's an enjoyable move, but it's not probably the most functional move in the world. It's great for anterior development and all that, but once we get into this back squat now, the front squat, and especially the deadlift, these are, can't be really more functional. How often are we getting up and sitting down during the day? How often do you have to pick something up off the ground? These are really probably the two big movements that if they're not in your programming, you're probably not doing something right. There's not the most potential for growth as well. Right? Absolutely. Right. So let's go for the back squat first up. Jace, do you want to start getting set up and take yep. people through it? So the big thing that people always ask you for a start is foot positioning. And the thing I want to say to everyone is it really doesn't matter. You need to find out what's suitable for you. You can adjust the effect of some of the muscles that you're having by changing foot position. But the most important thing for a start is to find out what works best for yourself. Notice Jace has got nice and level through the traps there, nice and comfortable. He's gripping just outside of shoulder width. You again, depending on your shoulder stability and also its uh, movement, will depend on where you can grip. So some nice you're nice and close, some of you're nice and wide. Jason, stand up through the bar. Good. Take the weight, bring himself back. He's going to set his feet. Then you're basically you're trying to screw those feet into the ground, and then once Jason makes the movement, he's going to sit back into it. And we want to get to at least parallel, if not below parallel, and then we're going to come straight back up again. Do you want to come around to the side for us, Dylan, so we can get a view? So the other thing to watch with this one, again, Jason's going to sit back for us. Coming right down below parallel, and then coming back up. Back on the side now, if we watch Jason do another rep. Coming down again, he's getting down nice and below that positioning, he's going to come up. Look at this neutral spine, he holds the whole time. And same with the head. We often see mistakes with the head. People try to lean back too much, go forward too much. The whole spine should be neutral. The other thing we want to be looking for is these legs. They should be nice and stable and holding on there. If you see them sort of shaking around and all that sort of stuff, you've either got too much weight on or your technique's off, you really need to fix that because you're looking at some knee issues. Jason, you want to switch to the front rack position for us, please? 
Yeah. So the reason we're showing the front rack position today is because it is one of the components of the Olympic lifts. Um, it's a great way to actually help correct some of these um, imbalances that Nathan was talking about. It forces you to really focus on your body position. You have to maintain a really neutral spine to stay up and keep the bar racked across the shelf, which is across your deltoids. So um, what I'm going to do is to show you a few different ways we can do the front position, but the, the first one that most people will adapt is using your hands. So I don't know whether you can see from here, I'm just going to rack it and take a couple steps back. So you'll notice when I get my elbows nice high and forward that uh, I'm almost rolling it all the way down on my fingers because I'm not actually trying to hold the bar, I'm just actually supporting it so it stays on, like I said, that shelf at the front of the deltoids. That way when I do make this front squat position, which is exactly the same way we did the back squat that Nathan described, I'm not going to lose the bar forward. I'm just going to go down, keep those elbows nice and high, and bring it back up. Now if I let these elbows drop, I'm going to do a little bit to hopefully not lose it. You're going to see that I'm going to start leaning forward, I'm chanting front weight onto my toes, and it gets real difficult and I start to lose it. I'm going to rack this back up. So again, front rack, letting it roll back onto our fingers, keeping those elbows nice and high, especially when we go down, just to keep that bar across that shelf. Alright, so now we're going to show a slightly different position to the front rack, because not everyone has that flexibility. I'm going to have a what we call the genie position, or the um, cross position. So having my elbows still nice and high, nothing changes there, that's going to keep the bar across the shelf, but instead of using my fingers and letting it roll, I'm actually just going to use my uh, pointy finger and my thumb. So I'm going to go on a rack and do a squat and Nathan's just going to kind of assess and let us know what's happening. Alrighty. So same thing, back up. And what we really want to look for as well is when we come back up guys, we want to be squeezing this butt as Dylan, the other member of Life Beast, likes to call it, acknowledging completion. So you finish that squat, you tighten up through the butt, you straighten everything up, you know you finish that rep there. The other thing we want to watch right at that bottom is you're not rolling your pelvis in or out, or what they like to call when they give you the butt wink. So your butt sort of winks at you as it ducks under. Big thing we don't want. Jason's going to throw it back up here for us now. So, the deadlift. It's probably my personal favourite of the three. I mean, it is probably one of the most functional movements out there. How often do we have to lift something up and down in life, really? Let's be honest, this is really what you're doing here. The important thing about the deadlift, and I know Jace will agree with me this, is you really should have someone instruct you or watch your form as you start to deadlift because it's the risk is there if you're not doing it properly. What do you reckon? I definitely agree with that. Um, there's so many different ways to feel right in this movement that um, even though you may think you're doing it right, you're probably not. And it is a scary prospect because I know there have been times where I fought for the lift that I probably shouldn't have. So we'll take you through a very basic setup for it, but again, we do encourage you to get someone to watch you as you start to deadlift. So my favourite setup, and the one I'll talk you through now, is one I got from Mark Ripito. A lot of people will probably be familiar with Mark. He recommends you walk up to the bar as it is now, get you standing, Jace, when we set this up, and you get your feet basically halfway under. We like about a shoulder width, so Jason, for me, would come slightly forward. I'll see Jason's own one. From that position at the top, you bend through the hips, straight down to grab the bar, so no bending through the legs. You take that grip, and now what you're looking for is to bring the shins, you lower the shins till they touch the bar. You're then gonna get that torque through the shoulders and straighten the back, so externally rotate through the shoulders, tight through the back, and it's a straight hinge moment, movement up. Easy, we always get that lockout lean back at the top. Drop it down, guys. The thing we wanna talk about, especially when it comes to a deadlift, is in my opinion, and opinion of most, there is no eccentric portion, which is that lowering portion. There is no real gain to trying to lower that in terms of the risk for your actual low back. So that's why you often see people dropping, or if you're at a place where they don't have the bumper plates, or dropping's probably not a, appreciated, then a very quick movement down, but still controlled. So Jace, do you want to run us sort of through how you sort of bring it down? So we're up. And there's one down nice and quick. Good. The other thing I hate to see, and I know Jack screws me again, bouncing it off the floor. The hardest part of the lift is breaking the floor, bringing it up. If you're bouncing it and then bringing it back up, one, you're causing all that shock and poor positioning through the lower spine. 
and two, you're basically cheating yourself of any real gain from the movement itself. So if you don't want to get strong and you do want to get hurt, it's a perfect thing to do. Well, it's no, it's no different than not having that external rotation of the shoulders, creating that neutral spine, because essentially what you're doing is you're losing that tension and you're creating that nice, that kind of rounded and jerking motion instead of actually that nice kind of flat motion where we're actually working the muscles that we're aiming for. Exactly. So it's, it's yeah, you're right, it's unsafe and you're not, getting, you're not hitting the target areas that we're really going for. And there are other options. We do have things like sumo deadlifts and Jefferson deadlifts and all that sort of stuff. That can be things you look at at a longer term sort of process. When you're just starting, the basic deadlift's perfect. This is one movement, unlike the others, that I don't recommend in high numbers because the until you really get good at it, your form will tend to go and it's just not worth the risk. Short, limited reps, but good amount still within the program is really what I would yeah, recommend. Especially when you've got something like the kettlebell swing, which is essentially the same movement with a lighter weight that can teach the kind of endurance instead of a Absolutely. Movement. And the final thing I'll probably mention with the deadlift is Although the deadlift will train your grip, you should not forgo lifting extra weight because your grip's not perfect. So straps, the old wraps that people often use, a really great option to make sure you're getting maximum sort of strength gain without compromising forearms. Actually, I think there was one other thing that Jace did want to talk about, and that's yes. hand positioning. Now, hand positioning. So you'll see a lot of people use this over underhand grip. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually going to prevent rolling of the bar so you don't lose your grip and you can lift a little more. For those who want to relate it back to say the Olympic lifts where they are gonna to need to get it up to their body and be able to press it above their heads, I'd say keep it as long as you can, just your double overhand, and then when you wanna start developing that strength and the kind of size, get into the um, over underhand grip. Perfect. All right guys, it's been a big one today. Stay tuned, we've still got the Olympic lifts to come. I hope you've enjoyed it. Comments always welcome. Any other ideas for us, let us know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and let us know on uh, Facebook as well if there's anything you want to see. This has been Jason and Nathan from Life Peace. Thanks for tuning in, guys.